and attempted some uh, reflections on the structures of Dasein uh, through uh, looking at um, the Nietzschean Ubermensch uh, in context uh, with a specific uh, approach to thinking Dasein. So Heidegger has made facticity one of the um, key features of Dasein um, at least in its provisional glance as uh, we may think that we can go back behind the facticity to the total ground and um, seize upon uh, something that doesn't then rise into a uh, another metaphysics so one way to think about facticity um, is that it's said in the same way that Heidegger uh, makes the pronouncement that thinking shares only this with philosophy or metaphysics, thinking shares only this with metaphysics, um, that it is not theology. So in this sense, uh, no leap is allowed, no leap of faith is allowed, no leap is allowed beyond um, the facticity, which means those uh, legible things or symbols, legible things or symbols, same thing, um, which, uh, as it were, just uh, are arrayed here. Um, so in perhaps an aleatory way, these symbols which happen to uh, be legible, these legible things before us, um, from which um, an infinite uh, picture can grow of things. Um, in Nietzsche, I think it's clarifactory to split Nietzsche's Ubermensch's metaphysics, which is a kind of metaphysics of... Um, those who uh, are the greatest and most deserving ought to win out and the will of those ought to win out and um, you can say in a way maybe that the talented ought to win or um, whereas uh, and that the world is a kind of struggle for the a contest to show who's who's better and things. But that could show, of course, in very simple examples that um, some people are, let's say, more athletic than others. And of course, uh, all kinds of factors could come in, but some people are gonna show themselves to have more athletic talent and the same in any other human pursuit or any other um, consideration. Uh, rather than the attempt to uh, flatten everything out to um, regard the aim of things to um, a kind of egalitarianism. Um, so this is a choice that the Ubermensch in consciousness of that which the Ubermensch wants to be conscious of, which is that there is this aleatory um, or um, accidental dispersion of the symbols before us, which then, um, this is the facticity, it frames um, our, um, our world. So it frames, it frames things in such a way that any, we would have to make, um, certain leaps beyond this say, say into um let's say into the messianic time which is like um saying the same thing as to go into the son of plato into the agathon into the good to know um or into sophos into wisdom somehow to go beyond what's known as sound and good 
or what seems to be by an example that we can actually point to, say Socrates, into something more, into something that's not obviously directly available, some kind of leap into the messianic time, and then um, claim that we can bring that back here. Instead, we have to remain at the bounds of what we have as actual um, paradigms or examples or um, has that originally was a, um, a picture, a paradigm is originally this um, sort of architect's drawing by which we, you have the example of how you should build the thing. So the facticity makes us some way stay with examples, but they're examples which are given to us in this um, dispensation, this um, so-called radically um, mysterious uh, dispensation of fate, which we just so happen to have uh, the symbols that are before us. So, for example, Heidegger gives, uh, says um, there's some uh, sort of wooden ob obstruction there in the um, in the, the path for primitive man, but the same uh, object within the, uh, a certain topos becomes the um, lectern of a university lecturer, and it's a part of the equipment of that world, um, namely our own. And um, th so the symbols are legible in different ways. Um, and we just happen to show up where the symbols are legible in the way they are now. Um, so Nietzsche goes back into consciously doing uh, a certain metaphysics of what he supposes would fit his time or fit his temperament or his project. Whereas um, for Heidegger, um, and Heidegger says this is the, uh, an act of, um, he doesn't say it specifically of Nietzsche, but he says of metaphysics or philosophy, um, as quoted by Agamben, that um, this is act of sharpening knives in a time when there's nothing left to cut. So he's over um, going back and forth from the paradigm mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the thing. He wants to instead um, try to seize upon what's most basic in the, uh, the factical structure or in the legibility of things. I use the word things instead of objects. Um, Strauss recommended the word things as more um, primary and less uh, pseudo-technical as the word object is. Um, or the symbols, we could say as well, the symbols. Uh, but we mean at the same time uh, what stands before us as a legible object, which is a particular, but it's understood according to the paradigm of the universal, um, if you want to state it in this um, that fashion. The attempt to go beyond uh, this kind of movement between paradigm and example or universal in particular is then uh, somehow an aware part of Heidegger's project. Uh, so Heidegger doesn't want to go back to another um, idol, another a new um, uh, burn your um, temple, burn what you've uh, worshipped and worship uh, what you've burned, change from uh, paganism to Christianity, for instance. But he wants to try to seize upon the basic structure um, in a way that hasn't been um, grasped uh, before.